Hello, welcome to Spade's World. I'm Captain Jack Spade, and on this channel, we're going to be talking about Star Trek Fleet Command. I've been playing the game for about a year and a few weeks. I started the game either in late January or early February of 2022. As you can see, I'm at Ops 48, and I actually only need to get uh, about a little over 8,100 in uncommon four-star ore to get to 49, and I, I will do that when I get that. I'd originally planned to camp like at 46 until I had enough uh, blueprints to get my next ship, but the one thing that it does do, it locks you out from getting those blueprints, I guess, until you get over 50. So that kind of blew that uh, plan out of the water. Even though I couldn't get the blueprints, I still plan to stay at um, Ops 46 until I build up my ships. Um, and I'm still going to do that. I'm not going to go over 50 until I uh, build all my ships to a certain level. Um, right now, I've got four four-star ships. I've got a Pelham, a Katinga, a Kulinar, and a Kelvin. So those are good ships. My favorite ships are the Pilum and the Katinga right now. I'm still building on the Kulinar. I've only had that for less than a month. So it's got some ways to go. And I'm not really too thrilled with the Explorer Strike Team. It is definitely the weakest of the three. And so far as I've been testing it, I've seen that uh, it, it, it can be... Uh, punched up on, and, and that's not good. So I'm um, experimenting with crews, and one day when I find a really good crew for that ship, I will reveal it right now. I, I would recommend it being, like you see right now, in, in, in the pecking order, it's my third ship. Even though it, it's, slight, it's almost the same or close to the same power as my Katinga, my Tatinga is definitely a better ship with the uh, Battleship Strike team. Well, anyway, I decided to do this channel. I've, I've listened to a bunch of the content creators, other YouTube videos. Some of them um, I don't think are very good players. Um, in fact, that one of them has played this game from the very beginning, and he is two levels below me. And his rep level is a joke compared to mine. Um, that's a that's the thing you should look at at players is not just the level the level um, a guy with a credit card can go through this level and he can still be pretty weak um, if his research his ships and uh, his rep level doesn't match his level right now rep level I'm into the 50s to me rep grinding is one of the most important things you can do in this game. Um, a lot of people waste their time doing a bunch of other stuff um, that doesn't really help them in the overall the game. Um, there are, and that is there's because there's a lot of different types of player. I'm an aggressive player. I like player versus player events. I'm an aggressive player, and I like an aggressive game. It's not everybody's cup of tea, and I know it, but I am not one of these farmers. I'm not playing Star Trek Farmsville here who's going to look at these events and tell you whether the juice is worth the squeeze. There's a lot of stuff in this game that are, it is not worth your time because it doesn't advance you in the game. It's there for a time waste and something to keep low and free-to-play players busy. I keep away from it. Um, now that I'm kind of at a holy stage, um, I've went and messed with the Stella. Um, and done some of the stuff in the outlaw research tree that I would never have done before. But now I'm to the point where I don't need to uh, grind any rep until I'm into my 50s now because I'll show you. My Federation is the lowest. Um, I'm right at the 10 million uh, lockout. My Klingon rep is 1.8 billion. I'm almost at 1.1 billion on my Romulan. Rep, and you can see the other ones. To me, these last three are the least important of the bunch. 
Um, there is a lot of good stuff in the Bajoran thing, but as you can see, I'm I'm waiting till I exhaust all the favors at those that level before I waste these uh, resources to go up and rep. That's where I'm at in the game, and uh, this is kind of an intro video. In the future, I'm going to go over the different events that we're doing, and I'm going to tell you whether they're the juice is worth the squeeze. There's a lot of these events because the payouts are so bad that they're not really worth your time. There are other things in the game that you can do. I'm a daily player. I play about three or four hours a day at least. So um, I try to complete as many of the events as I can that I think that are worthwhile. If there's one that I think is not worth my while, I'll just won't do it. And that's the way to do it because from listening to these content creators that they judge the the engagement on these events as much as they do people spending stuff in here. That's not the only factor. So like uh, uh, there was one re there was an event recently that I just left blank because I thought the, the payouts were so that wasn't worth doing. So look for some new videos for me. I'm going to do them as much as I can. Um, I'm never going to ask you for money or I'm not going to put this behind a paywall. Um, I'm going to do, I'm doing this because I want to. So shield up buckaroos because you never know when Captain Jack's going to come knocking.